Welcome to the Mormon Temple Blood Oaths video. Here is a picture of the Temple of Solomon mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible. On May 4, 1842, Joseph Smith Jr., the first Mormon prophet, instituted the Temple Endowment Ritual in Nauvoo, Illinois. It is supposedly a restored version of the ceremony practiced in the Temple of Solomon from Old Testament times. Mormon Temple Ceremony Blood Oaths At three stages of the Temple Endowment, participants were asked to take a blood oath of secrecy regarding the gestures of the ceremony. Participants promised that if they ever revealed the gestures of the ceremony, they would be subject to the following. Stage 1. My throat be cut from ear to ear, which was spoken out loud. The pictures above show the gesture. The guy on the left is a Mormon picture. The guy on the right, Masonic. Source for this, Reed Smoot case, Congressional Hearings, Volume 2, 1906, and the Doctrines and Dogmas of Brighamism, Exposed, J.D. Stead, 1911. And they would be subject to having my tongue torn out by its roots, which was spoken out loud. Source for this is The Mystery of Mormonism, Stuart Martin, 1920, Temple Mormonism, Its Evolution, Ritual, and Meaning by W.M. Payden, 1931, Mormonism, Shadow or Reality, Gerald and Sandra Tanner, 1972. And here, of course, we see a picture of the tongue. Freemasons said similar blood oaths in their ceremonies. Here is one. I will never reveal any part or parts, art or arts, point or points of the secret arts and mysteries of ancient Freemasonry, binding myself under no less penalty than to have my throat cut across, very similar to Mormonism, and my tongue torn out by the roots, also very similar. Sources for this, Freemasonry Exposed, William Morgan, 1827, Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry, Jabez Richardson, 1860, Revised Freemasonry Illustrated, uh, Jacob O. Dozberg and Jonathan Blanchard, 1916. Freemasonry, which claims to have been created at the time of the construction of Solomon's Temple in the 10th century BC by its master mason, Hiram Abiff, actually seems to have been a development of the craft guilds during the construction of the great European cathedrals during the 10th to 17th centuries AD. This was long before Joseph Smith developed his own ceremony. Joseph became a master mason on March 15, 1842, shortly before developing his own ceremony. Source for this is the development of the Mormon Temple Endowment Ceremony by David John Berger, Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought in 1987. And here we have a picture of the ancient tongue terror, which was a torture device. Uh, yes, tearing out the tongue by the roots is not new to Joseph Smith or the Masons. This was a rather simple torture device where large tongs or calipers are used to tear out the victim's tongue. This was a popular way to punish European heretics in the Middle Ages from the 5th to the 15th century AD so they wouldn't spread blasphemy. The person's mouth was forced open. The iron tongue terror was used to grab the tongue within its rough grippers. Once a firm hold was maintained, the screw could be firmly tightened and the tongue was roughly torn from the prisoner's head. You can find sources for this online at occasionalhell.com, urbandictionary.com, and listaholic.com at the addresses listed on this page. Okay, let's move to Stage 2, Blood Oaths and Penalties of the Early Mormon Temple Endowment Ritual. Stage 2, to have our breasts cut open, which was spoken out loud. And here, these two pictures, the one on the left is the Mormon picture, the one on the right, the Mason, is the gesture for having your breasts cut open. Sources, Reed Smoot case, the Congressional Hearings of 1906, and the Doctrines and Dogmas of Brighamism Exposed by J.D. Stead. 1911. Okay, also stage two, 
and to have our hearts and vitals torn from our bodies, which was spoken out loud. And here we see a picture of the heart and vitals, intestines, etc. Sources of the Mystery of Mormonism, Stuart Martin, 1920, Temple Mormonism by Payden, 1931, and Mormonism Shadow or Reality by the Tanners, 1972. And continuing with stage two, the hearts and the vitals would be given to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field which would be spoken out loud. And here we see a vulture chewing on some of those vitals. Freemasons said similar blood oaths in their ceremonies. And here's an example. Binding myself under no less penalty than to have my left breast torn open, sounds familiar, and my heart and vitals taken from thence, sounds familiar, to become a prey to the wild beasts of the field and the vultures of the air, also familiar. Uh, this is Freemasonry, very similar to Mormonism. Sources, uh, Freemasonry exposed by Captain William Morgan, 1827. Richardson's Monitor, Freemasonry again. Revised, Freemasonry illustrated again, uh, 1916. Okay, stage three, blood oaths and penalties of the early Mormon temple endowment ritual. Stage three, which would be spoken out loud. Our bodies be cut asunder in the midst. And here you see the gesture for that. The one on the left is the Mormon. The one on the right is uh, Mason. Very similar gestures all the way through here between Mormon and Mason. Sources read Smoot case again and Doctrines and Dogmans of Brighamism. Okay, also uh, stage three, they would be cut in the midst. And, of course, they would have to speak out loud, and all our bowels gush out. Sounds reasonable when you're cut in your midst. Sources for this is The Mystery of Mormonism, Stuart Martin, again, 1920, Temple Mormonism by Payton, 1931, Mormonism, Shadow of Reality, 1972. And, of course, being cut in your midst is nothing new. In medieval times, they had saw torture. They would hang the body upside down, and the body would be cut in half. Also, uh, Freemasons said similar blood oaths to being cut in your midst uh, in their ceremonies. And here we have the example of that. Binding myself under no less penalty than to have my body severed in two in the midst and divided to the north and the south, and my bowels burnt to ashes. Sources Freemasonry Exposed, Richardson's Monitor, a Freemasonry and Revised Freemasonry Illustrated, a complete exposition of the first three Masonic degrees of 1916. Treason in the Middle Ages of England was punished by hanging, drawing, and quartering. The prisoner was hanged and cut down when he was still alive. Then his stomach was cut open and his bowels were taken out and burned in front of him. Finally, he was decapitated and cut into quarters. The, some of these ideas sound very similar to the blood oaths of the Mormons and the Masons. And, of course, uh, these kinds of torture is nothing new. Uh, Joseph Smith didn't invent these ideas, nor did the Masons. Uh, source for this is Wikipedia, Hang, Drawn, and Quartered article. In 1919, President Heber J. Grand appointed a committee charged with revising the Mormon Temple Endowment Ceremony, which was done under the direction of Apostle George F. Richards from 1921 to 1927. Among the changes that were instituted was the modification of the oaths. While the execution of the penalty gestures would show different ways in which life may be taken, see the pictures above, remained unchanged, the Mormon Church replaced the verbal blood oaths with the phrase, which would also be spoken out loud, rather than do so, I would suffer my life to be taken. So a lot less gruesome, but yet you're still doing the gestures and you are suffering your life to be taken, so it's not completely nonviolent. The source here, the development of the Mormon Temple Endowment Ceremony, again by David John Burger. Dialogue of Journal of Mormon Thought, 1987, and some historical department archives of the Menace of the St. George Temple Historical Records.
So from 1842 until about 1927, approximately 85 years, all Mormon temple endowment participants said the original blood oaths out loud and executed the penalty gestures as shown in the pictures on the previous slide. And another change happened in April of 1990. The Mormon Church eliminated the penalty gestures from the Temple Endowment altogether, and they also took out the revised verbal oath, which said, rather than do so, I would suffer my life to be taken. During the period when these oaths were used, there was no documented instance in which a person was killed or tortured for having violated the oaths. But after 85 years of saying the original blood oaths, Mormon Temple Endowment participants executed the penalty gestures and the revised oath for about another 63 years. So all in all, violent oaths were spoken out loud for about 148 years. Sources again, The Mystery of Godliness, A History of Mormon Temple Worship, and this is actually David John Berger's book, which came out in 2002, and Is the Temple Ceremony Sacred or Secret by Bill McKeever, MRM.org, and Wikipedia, Penalties of Mormonism article. Okay, here we see a picture of the FLDS temple at the YFC Ranch near El Dorado, Texas. This is the fundamentalists. Uh, some groups within the Mormon fundamentalist movement continue to practice the temple endowment without the 1927 and 1990 changes. Consequently, these groups still participate in the blood oaths when performing the endowment. Some of the denominations that continue to perform the original temple endowment include the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the FLDS, and the Apostolic United Brethren, among others. Source for this is Wikipedia, Penalties of Mormonism article. And this concludes the Mormon Temple Blood Oaths video. Here's an in interesting book you can find on Amazon. It's called The Inside of Mormonism, A Judicial Examination of Endowment Oaths Administered in All the Mormon Temples, uh, which was in, written in 1903 by the United States District Court. So that might be an interesting document uh, that goes over the same things I've gone over in this video.